So, how do you affordably travel one of the world's most expensive cities? Well, it goes a little bit something like this. What's up guys and welcome to your weekly Los LeBlanc fix. It is time today to dive into the city of Hong Kong, an incredible destination. Now this is actually my second visit and I spent about 10 days on this trip to make sure that I found the best restaurants, the best viewpoints, the best places for you to go and explore and I wanted to give you some tips and tricks to saving some money on this upcoming trip. So without further ado, let's start right where you're going to start your trip which is in the Hong Kong airport. It's actually cheapest to set your phone up in the airport, very rare to see that but that was the case for me. I paid around 65 Hong Kong dollars for the SIM card and the data plan. It was definitely worthwhile, especially because of how heavily I relied on Google Maps throughout this trip. We have been at the airport now for about two hours looking around the websites from Agoda, Booking.com, Airbnb, and we have finally found a solution. So I'll show you what it is. We're heading there now. Typically there's two main areas people like to stay in Hong Kong. There's Kowloon and there's Hong Kong Island. Kowloon is very much the conventional Asian feeling hub, almost like the Times Square of Asia, and it tends to be a little bit cheaper. Now going on to the island, the downtown hub, this is actually the formerly British side of Hong Kong. This side feels a slight bit more modern and it's got the iconic Victoria Peak. Hour and 15 minutes later, it's dark outside. With all the lights, it feels like it's daytime. It's like the Times Square of Hong Kong. Now, food. It's gonna be one of the biggest parts of your trip to Hong Kong. Melissa and Alejandro did their research. They were proactively searching for the best restaurants in the city. And even though we couldn't try all of them, we have so many incredible restaurants to share with you. Our first meal in Hong Kong started off at the internationally renowned Din Tai Fung. time our first Hong Kong meal and if you don't already know dim sum is like one of the top Chinese foods you need to try so tonight we're getting the finest of it and then we'll show you the hostel we booked so truth be told this is not exactly the cheapest place to go but that's kind of why we chose to stay in a cheaper place we wanted to have our money like allocated to doing the best experiences and really seeing Hong Kong cheers to that so good so so good it is time for our room tour and the room tour is now over because this is everything except for a toilet right over there. Now this cost me 125 US dollars for two nights and if you don't know this already, Hong Kong is the second most expensive place in the world based on real estate prices and the amount you'll pay for hotels and rents reflect that. Kathy's gonna stay here do a bit of work but I'm gonna be going to meet with Ali and Melissa to show you guys one of the best desserts in Hong Kong or so I've been told. Thank you. I don't know if I could ever live here, but strictly as a visitor, it's so cool to experience. This is kakigori, a dessert that changed my life and became part of our nightly routine in Hong Kong. Shaved ice. Shaved ice, thank you very much. And this is the Oreo flavored one. I've now had strawberry matcha, but Oreo is my favorite and it's awesome. It's 80 Hong Kong dollars, which is quite a bit, but it's very much worth it and you could probably split it. Mm. We only mess with the best and so we were constantly going to Shari Shari. There's a few of them located throughout Hong Kong, but the incredible thing is they actually import their ice from Japan. You will love it or your money back. Terms and conditions may apply. So we just got our metro heading back. It's $14 instead of $177, which is what it would have costed if we took the Uber. So overall, you save a lot of money with metro. Just got back, see you guys in the morning. Good morning, guys, and welcome to another day. So it's actually not even close to morning. It's actually 4 p.m. right now. We had a really late start because we had a really late night. We went out to Lang Pai Fong, which is like one of the craziest places I've ever gone out. We're taking you to this really beautiful 
beautiful, beautiful housing project area where they have subsidized housing for people here in Hong Kong. It cost us $150 to get here, which is pricey, guys. Uber started at $115, but then actually I checked again and it surged up to $180. But we have just arrived, so let's go explore Choi Hong. Choi Hong. Choi Hong. And so this is what draws in people like myself, photographers, videographers. It's the beautiful pastel rainbow that they have going on. And this is actually home to like between 18,000 and Cat Tea Red 43,000 people. But what is for sure is that there's a lot of people living in a very small quarter. Kind of worked out. It's about to start pouring. With that, it cleared the entire basketball court and only the dedicated remain. <laughs> <laughs> Show us your Peruvian basketball all-star moves. Kathy used to be captain of the team, so she claims. I promise. She said she used to be the tallest in her class. I was, I have pictures. <laughs> oh! Kathy oh. made a new friend. Hello. Arrow. Arrow. So one of the things I love about Kathy is she's got like such a big heart. I was shooting around, getting shots with the drone, and Kathy looks over and sees a little boy getting beaten up by some other little kids. And like she immediately stepped in, like went to like comfort the kid, be there. She's just been hanging out with him for the past hour. It's clearly opened up now, and now they're just playing basketball. And, uh. I go, I go. Let's go team Watashik! Our journey in Hong Choi is over so now we have to head to the black to the black market to the night market. We have to head now to the night market so we're gonna do it in an affordable way and we have to take the subway for this. Okay. Hi. Hello! Hi. How do you say hello in hello. Uh, how do you say hello in Hong Kong? Hello, Le Hong! See you. <laughs> I was explaining to her what we do and she's like, she beautiful, you smart. <laughs> I'm like, what? What does that make me? We finally arrived to Temple Street and that's the beginning of the night market. So, entrance and the market is over there. Come with me. Is that real Louis Vuitton? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. So that right there is a $10 Louis Vuitton, and she even said it's real, so. Yeah, she said it's real. Wow. The savings are unreal. We need to control Christian. Supreme? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Supreme. Very nice. Sexy guapa mamacita! We didn't just make fun of everything, we actually bought something. <laughs> it's not a popular opinion, but they do say that China is the leader of all fashion trends. Very fashion forward. It is the newest collection, the Surf Collection by Myra Gay. It's a constant reminder to always smill. Check it out. And they flip up like that. How could you not buy it? Very cool. <laughs> from the moment we got there, the people were incredible. And even though from time to time there is a language barrier, you definitely can get by because they're more than willing to help. They were so nice. And we have literally just now reached the end of Temple Street. Alright guys, we are at my favorite restaurant ever. We're at Hiki Noodle Cart. And the reason we came here is because there's one item on the menu that I just absolutely love. I dream about it. They have my all-time favorite meal. Oh my gosh, it's got beef belly, it's got pork intestines, pig blood, and fish balls all in one. Mmm, deep fried three kinds balls. Mmm. What is that? What kind of balls are they? You don't want to know. <laughs> this was only $20 for everything that you saw here. Pretty awesome deal. I even got myself two of these milk teas because they're freaking awesome. All right, um, I'll let you do your thing. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I will have to make a hole in my pants. Don't get too comfortable. That was good. Now let's go home. <laughs> hey guys, just a little reminder. Don't forget to hit the like button, okay? See you in a bit. 
45 minutes outside of downtown and we are going to an area known as Sai Kong. This is Bosco, he is from Hong Kong and he's showing us around today. Bosco drove us about 45 minutes outside of Kowloon, downtown Hong Kong area, but the interesting thing is that in order to get past right here, this checkpoint, you actually need to be either a local or have a permit to drive people in. So that's why we actually had to take a taxi beyond this point. <laughs> Thank you, Nung Kam Chen. Guys, if you come here, you gotta find him. He's the best. He's made my day already. He was the happiest man on earth. I know, it's so cool. This is actually something I should mention is that in Hong Kong, it's not customary to tip people. I tried to give him a 20. He basically, in a very polite way, said, oh, that's okay, like it's not necessary. Even though tipping is not customary, every now and then when you meet someone special and they really make your day, I see no problem with leaving one. So this is why we walked all the way down to the beach because this is a side of Hong Kong you probably didn't know existed. This incredible white sand beach on some days can have beautiful blue ass water out there when the sun is perfect and today it's pretty good actually considering this morning was so gray. But there's something I need to show you and this is because of the recent typhoon that came through. This whole walkway has been devastated. When you look past the destruction, you see the incredible natural beauty here. Bosco, so what is this on, on the left here? Well, it was a helicopter pad that is caused by the typhoon. Go, Kathy, you got help. this. It's actually better if you jump. Nicely done. All right, so this is why we drove about an hour and a half to two hours outside of Hong Kong, walked about an hour down a hill, up a little bit of a treacherous passage, and this is what you get. One of the four rock pools here, and the incredible thing is, there's only five of us here right now. Because we had gray clouds this morning, and it's a weekday, we got this place basically to ourselves. Cliff jump. From how high up? It's uh, eight meters. Eight meters, okay. What's up fam? We are on our way back after a really, really tough hike back up the hill. Now, you may have noticed this isn't the same car we came in. Hmm. Um, I dropped my keys. Uh, Somewhere during our route back to the pools. See you later, dude. See you later. So, we got a warning that we might not fit in our room with three bags. He was trying to upgrade us. I don't know if it's true or not. Oh! <laughs> Oh my gosh. This is nice. You can like look at me. It's very nice. I'll, we can so when I'm going to, Yeah, when I'm going to the bathroom, you can just be like chatting with me. It's not that bad. Though. Well, it's nice. It's like nice. I, I don't care if it's little. It's nicer than yeah. anything we have had, but yeah. it's just so funny. It's, it's so funny. This place is 75 a night, but it's modern, it's clean, and as long as you know the person you're sharing a room with, it should be okay. <laughs> And guess what? There is nothing to have privacy, so this is my view. <laughs> All aboard! Taking the midnight bus going anywhere. So we just paid the equivalent of like $1.50 to get to our destination. The transportation system is really good. There's so many buses, they run so frequently. You can literally see it all over the street, these double-decker buses. So I have to say that taking a bus or the metro are both great options. So on the flight over to Hong Kong, we met this random guy from Toronto. We asked him what restaurants we should check out here in Hong Kong. He told us to check out Crystal Jade, and right now, I just had these handmade egg noodles with a spicy sauce and peanut sauce, and it is amazing. I'll do it if you do it. Okay. Okay. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> oh. Cheers. 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 It's not that bad. I don't always wake up for sunrise, but when I do, I complain about how early it is the entire way through. We've just arrived here at the top of the mountain above the Hong Kong Island, known as Victoria's Peak, and we're gonna be showing you guys what we hope to be a beautiful sunrise. Otherwise, this will not have been worth it. What's up, party people? I'm the party person.
All right guys, after an incredible sunrise this morning, we're now taking one of the coolest ways you can get around Hong Kong. It is the tram car that runs all the way down from Victoria Peak back into the downtown side. All aboard. Let's go for Hong Kong land. This slope right now is like this. You can't tell, but this is way better than a taxi. That's basically what it's actually like right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was super cool. Definitely take the tram at least one direction. Alright guys, so we have saved arguably one of the best things of Hong Kong for last. After doing sunrise at Victoria Peak, we had a long AF nap. We woke up around midday, around 1.15pm, and now we've just gotten into a taxi to go to Lantau Island. We're going to Tong Chung Station. From there, we're going to be taking one of the world's longest gondolas up a mountain to what is arguably Hong Kong's most recognizable site. We got 25 minutes to get to the top, and we're going to have some incredible views. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Whoa, god! That's so sick. trippy! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> So this is the pathway that if you hadn't taken the gondola, you would follow all the way to the top. We're all in agreement that that was one of the highlights of Hong Kong so far. The gondola is spectacular. Bit of an update guys, we've been looking for Alejandro for like an hour now. I'm really not sure where he went because like I looked back and then he was gone and then there he is. Ale, you can't keep running away like that, man. Alejandro has never looked so good. Yeah. A little bit hornier than usual. Hi. I watch a YouTube channel. Very nice to see you Thank too. Bye-bye. Hi. Hello, puppers. Wow. You better move out of the way. Did you hear my joke? Okay. previously mentioned, one of the best things about Hong Kong is the food. And with that being said, we didn't get to try every one of the best restaurants, but we did try a lot of them. And I wanted to share some of my top choices with you. First honorable mention is definitely going to the cupping room. If you're looking for an awesome breakfast or brunch, it's right in central Hong Kong and it is delicious. Alejandro is a coffee connoisseur. He loves drip coffee and for him to give a big thumbs up to the coffee says a lot. The coffee, the food, it is a double thumbs up. Another incredible breakfast spot on the Kowloon side is Studio Caffeine and this is another trendy restaurant. Katy and I both got incredible breakfast sandwiches, the cappuccinos were fantastic and that's all I'm gonna say. Another great breakfast spot that I ate at twice is called Urban Coffee Roasters. It was right across from my hostel, conveniently located and so it was a awesome find. The last breakfast spot I want to share with you is perfect if you're craving like an American style diner experience. It's called Brunch Club and Supper. Kind of a weird name but the food is fantastic. Katy actually claims it's one of the best omelets she's had. Now if you're having a night out in Lan Kwai Fong, a place that you should definitely start your night at is no joke called Ho Li Fook. Now I don't know if they're trolling us, but either way, the food is the bomb.com. It's like this kind of funky Chinese style restaurant and it's done up in a rather modern and hip way. I really enjoyed my meal there and the drinks were also great. When you're ready to take it up a notch, then just walk a block away and go to Quinary for a couple cocktails before your night out. I have to say, some of the best cocktails I've had are right here and it's actually internationally renowned as one of the best cocktail bars, or so I was told. On the theme of incredible cocktail bars, one of the most beautiful bars I have ever seen in my life is this one right here. It's called Goes, and if you want to have a drink, some appies, this would be an awesome spot to do it. It's like this grand Victorian theme with a side of like steampunk and edge. You just gotta check it out. It's so beautiful. For our last meal, we've come to Yum Cha, and there's a few of them in the area. They're like a big franchise, and they have some really, really funny dim sum. It's so awesome. Ah! So the food was really good, but the bill was extremely shocking. We spent about $40 US per person on what was a relatively big meal, but I didn't even get a drink, we didn't get dessert, it was just a really, really expensive meal.
The last one I want to share with you is Little Bao. And if you've never had a bao before, it is a Chinese style bun with pork inside, sometimes chicken. With that being said, it wasn't my favorite meal just because I'm not that big on baos. But if you're looking to experience something new, hip, and trendy, check out Little Bao. What do you call a rapper that just had an incredible bao? Bao wow. <laughs> Just a strong independent canine walking himself across the street. You don't need no man. Now, the original reason that we went to Hong Kong was actually because of this. <laughs> Right there is Cardistry Con. It is basically a conglomeration, a community of smooth handed, magic loving card movers. I think that's the best way I can put it. Personally, I love immersing myself in new situations, new communities, new cultures, and this right here is a very interesting subculture. I'm the cardist of the year. I won the award. Oh shit! What? Oh, shit. <laughs> that's pretty good. Oh, <laughs> hey guys. Hey yo, what's up man? Oh, sorry guys, my hat was on its side. And that just about wraps it up guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're new to Team Get Lost, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next Saturday. Love you guys so much. Hit the bell button, hit the like button, hit all the buttons. And don't forget to come back next Saturday so I can tell you to press some more buttons. And let's get lost again in the next one. Okay, bye. Hey yo, Felipa. Where my money? Where my mo- Sorry. Can I call you back? Camera's still rolling.